Hi, this is Schroeder with Cult Movies Magazine and Cult Movies Television, and we're here today with Mark Colgrove for, you're the director, producer, you wrote, you did all these things for the movie, right? Most of it. I didn't write it. It was actually written by Mark LeKay, who uh, co-produced it, but I did uh, all the directing and the editing on it. Yeah. And the movie that we're here to see tonight is Isle of the Damned. I'm here to see Isle of the Damned. I mean, Zombie's a great flick, too, but this is why I'm here, because of this movie, it's a fucking fantastic movie, so... Uh, Mark, okay, first off, how does it feel to have a Hollywood premiere with your movie, Isle of the Dam? It's very exciting, actually, yeah, it's like, uh, and it feels kind of like, uh, it's all come full circle now, too, that we're showing with, uh, Fulci, you know, because it's like, okay, we got our fake Antonello Giallo, our fake director, and finally, it's like, our fake director has gotten his real, uh, you know, comeuppance, or, you know, his, uh, it's come full circle, basically. Yeah. And how in tune were you, uh, were you with the director for the soundtrack? I mean, did you have to get any direction from him, or did you just do it on your own? It was a combination of both things. Um, I think when it started, uh, Mark approached me and said, I'm doing this Italian uh, homage film of old uh, horror movies from Italy from the 70s. And I was really excited about it because I love that stuff. And I instantly went home and just started producing tracks right off the bat, things that I thought would sound great. Um, we worked on it for three years together, and we actually, I actually started ending up, uh, uh, Mark LeKay, the writer, was helping him uh, assist and edit, yeah. and I actually stepped in because Mark got, had to go to Iraq because he's in the military. So once I started doing that, we started getting more uh, precise with uh, some of the scoring. You know, I would go over and like, so we didn't have a proper setup at the time. I would, uh, you know, write down the time of a scene and try to like do things kind of like hodgepodge like that. And then like as we got near the end of it, Mark would start asking me for specific kinds of pieces and whatnot. And then when like Kay got back from Iraq, he also asked me for a few, uh, you know, things that were in movies that he loved, like a style of a song. Like I remember one of them was like a, I want like organs with like a funk beat, you know, like, so like, that's kind of how it went off. Went off. And what inspired you to create Isle of the Dam? We had, um, you know, we had done one before this actually. We did a, a film called Pleasures of the Damned and it was kind of like a experiment, you know, in our backyard and we were doing the, you know, the, the bad dubbing, you know. We're all fans of Italian horror in general. And uh, so we had done sort of a sort of zombie movie kind of along the lines of Burial Ground. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we were kind of goofing around, and but it kind of worked better than we thought it would, and uh, so we figured, all right, let's try and do a sequel, but like make it a cannibal movie, and uh, really spent some time doing it. So we took about three years, uh, you know, shooting on the weekends, and uh, you know, it's just a group of friends, nobody got paid, and. Uh, <laughs> And did you use any uh, sound effects? I mean, did you use any effects to achieve the 70s score? I mean, it sounds like a, a genuine 70s score to me. I mean, you know, it, it coincides with the movie so well. Did you use any kind of software to achieve that? Um, you know, it really was kind of like I know my gear and I know what I want. And I have to admit that I worked on a four-track tape machine for about 10 years to learn how to record. It's like I was touring around in bands for a long time. And I. I couldn't afford to get the gear I really like wanted. So I had like a Moog emulator I had gotten over the years and like some things. But what I would do is I'd do tricks. Like I would run like a digital Moog emulator, but I'd run it through like some tubes, you know, like a tube amp to kind of warm it up. And like, I, you know, I guess I cheated, you know what I mean? Like to a certain degree, just because I don't, I didn't have the finances to really, you know, I would, I mean, obviously I would love to go into a 24, you know, real studio and get like all vintage instruments, but I'm not in that position. So I had to kind of like sit around really late at night really late some nights, and really just fiddle with the EQ. I mean, really, if you know what you're doing and you fiddle with the EQ long enough, you can make it sound like anything you want. You just gotta know which frequencies go where, and just kind of drop, certain, like certain sounds, I would just drop all the high end out of it and stuff like that, and um, you know, that's how I would achieve those kind of like vintage or authentic sounds you're hearing. You know, and it's also, I just have a, a vast knowledge of that stuff. I grew up listening to horror movie soundtracks from the 70s, I love that stuff. I also was a fan of like like Rush and stuff like that, which they always they always had those instruments growing up. So I was so I know those I know those sounds very well. And are you currently working on any projects you want our viewers to know about? We're uh, currently producing uh, a sort of uh, not really a prequel, but uh, it's you know kind of related. You're going to see a lot of the same stupid uh, sense of humor, but it's a uh, monster movie called Mutantis, sort of set in the 
earlier 70s, I guess. This is probably like 73, 74, but it's uh, sort of our homage to uh, Don Doler, uh, who's a uh, Baltimore native, just like us, uh, and uh, we're big fans of movies like The Alien Factor and Night Beast and... Uh, yeah. John Waters' territory as well. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> what, what, what advice would you give to any aspiring composers out there? I would say have... Be lucky enough to know somebody who's making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's who you know. and You can be the most talented dog in the entire world, and if you don't know anybody, then... I've been making music for a long time, and it really just comes down to that. You know, it's an unfortunate truth about it all. I mean, unless, I mean, unless you have somebody who's willing to invest behind you and push you and you get, you get management, which is hard too. I mean, it's not like you can just go on the internet and find an agent for this stuff. They hide because they don't want every, you know, guy who can't really do it contacting them every day. So, you know, it's really just a matter of, it, it, it stinks, but it's the truth. It's, it's really, I lucked into it, you know, I, I, and it led to a lot more work for me. So. It's um, and it's you know hopefully I'll, hopefully they'll keep building you know I'm gonna try to I'm working on the next film um, for uh, Dire Wit the Mutantis film which is gonna hopefully be awesome it looks great already what I've seen what was the most complicated scene the worst thing would be the the Cannibal Village uh, the uh, you know twenty person uh, unga bunga sodomy <laughs> scene uh, we. Uh, we had a, a friend of ours uh, actually runs a farm, and we shot it on a in a cow pasture. Actually, so it's supposed to be a field in South America, but it was actually a cow pasture. And actually, halfway during the day, uh, all the cows almost like they stampeded through the set. So uh, there's probably some funny uh, unused footage there of cows tossing through. But uh, it was just a stressful day because that was the most amount of people I think we had on set. It was probably uh, thirty some people all together, and you know. Trying to make sense of the chaos was a little tough, you know. Before that, it's like 10 would be, uh, you know, the average, I guess. This is Schroeder with Cult Movies TV. The music started loud, so I don't know if you can even hear me, but this is Schroeder with Cult Movies TV. We've got Paul Joyce, composer of Isle of the Dam. Check the movie out. <laughs>